children of the promise. All of God's no children. No longer do we have to abide by children of the bondage. Laws that break laws. Israel's children. Children of the Lord has promise. All of God's children. Children of the bondage. Israel's children. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Truth Be Told Ministries. Today is September 30th, which is also the Sabbath day. I am Ak Yoshaya. This is Sister Abby Yah. And we're coming again to bring some more truth about the Sabbath. Now, I know I have a lot of videos that I have made about the Sabbath versus um, I had Old Testament, New Testament, then I had the ones from the New Heavens, New Earth, the Sabbath then. And um, now we have some more where we show how they did away with it. And the Bible shows who did away with it and how. So we know it ain't Christ or the, or the disciples or the Father. They didn't have nothing to do with the chain of the Sabbath. Actually, Rome did. But it was in the scriptures that who did it. It was the nation that comes right after uh, the Grecian Empire. If you read Daniel, it'll show you. But um, So what we're going to do now is I wanted to show you some... Uh, the other uh, other denomination. What do other people say about the Sabbath? But first, I want you to understand what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath is not Saturday. I'm, I'm not trying to say it is not on Saturday. It is not Saturday. Now, I'm going to show you what book I'm reading out of. And this is the Strong's Concordance book, Bible. It's like a dictionary. And I want to show you the, the word Sabbath. And we have Shabbaton and we have Shabbat. Now, Shabbat, which says it is a rest, a decease from exertion. And it's a time of ceasing, to celebrate, to make fail. It said to keep Sabbath and to put away, to uh, put away, to take away, and to cease from labor. So, Sabbath is only a time for resting and ceasing from your labors. Now, the Most High chose that to be on the seventh day. So, therefore, the Shabbat, or Sabbath, the seventh day was given that name. Not Saturday was given Sabbath. The pagans, well, Romans and, and other people, they the one added Saturday to the name. But today it's called the Shabbat day. Or you say Yom Shabbat, which means Yom is day, Shabbat means rest. So it could be day of rest or day of ceasing, which was Yom Shabbat. So that's what I wanted to get everybody familiar with first before we get to seeing what it is. Some people always try to say, ah, oh, I say it ain't Saturday. No, it's not Saturday, but it's on the seventh day. And then next we're going to come before that. It's a Sabbath just for the Jews. We're going we're gonna to figure that out first before we get to what the other denominations say first, because we got a lot of people who are saying that too. The Sabbath was just for the Jews. You know, the Isaiah 56. Uh, the Sabbath was just for the Jews. And we're going to start right at 1. All right. Book of Isaiah Chapter 56, verse 1. Thus says the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. I'm going to start right there. When, what, what verse, what did you just hear? Just telling people to keep, to keep his justice and his righteousness, for his salvation is to come. Is he telling who he's going to save? He hasn't saved it just yet. His deliverance is coming and it's going to be, to be revealed. However, he didn't mention no race. He's just telling you to guard it, to keep it, because it's about to be revealed. Okay. Verse 2. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold unto it. Okay. Blessed. Now, this is the blessings from the Father. Blessed is the man. Did it say blessed is the Jew? Blessed is the Hebrew Israelite? Blessed is the Seventh-day Adventist? No. Blessed is the man. When they say man, it's, of course, the Bible is more of a predominantly a masculine book. So it does put man ahead because man was created first. Of course, according to the sin of Eve, she sinned first, which caused man to sin. So that's why the man became a little higher than the woman. And it showed it in Genesis that when Adam became higher than Eve because of the sin of Eve. Not that we so more superior over woman to beat them down. It's just that man became a little bit over because of the sin of Eve. However... We still supposed to love Eve, you know, or your wife, as the Messiah loved the church. I just want people to understand that yes, man does supposed to lead, but not to bash his wife or his or, or women in general. Because I've been seeing a lot of 
Hebrew stuff going on with men completely bashing the women. But that's another subject. So let's keep going. That keep of the Sabbath from polluting it and keep of his hand from doing any evil. Okay, so blessed is that one, that individual man from mankind, from keeping the Sabbath, from polluting the Sabbath, and to keep his hands from doing evil. The position of hand from doing evil is your actions, your works. It didn't say the Jews again. Anybody who does not want to profane his Sabbath and also keep from his hand from doing evil. Now, how do you know what evil is if you don't know what the law is? If there is no law, we won't know what evil. And we know evil corresponds to the works of Satan, which Christ told you what was called sin. And the New Testament called sin is the transgression of the law. So all of this all play a part in each other. That's why the Sabbath is still in the law. That's why it says, remember, ever since he established it, it would never be done away with. We're going to prove that anyway. Then we're going to prove what other people say about it so people can stop saying, hey, you stupid. You keep the Sabbath. That was done away with. And y'all seven-day Adventists, so you Hebrew Israelites, the only people that keep it. Well, I want to show you. It could be true, but I'm going to show you what everybody else say about the Sabbath. I'm going to continue. Verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord say, speak, saying, The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Okay, so in verse 3, it already said it right there. Sons of a stranger or a foreigner. So he is a, he is a son or he's a stranger to the land of Israel. If they say if he's in Israel, he's a stranger to this land, so he's not an Israelite, he's not a Hebrew. Or it could be somebody who don't know this walk of life, don't know the Sabbath. They are a stranger also from this because they don't keep the Sabbath. Like, if somebody come into our house today, they're not Sabbath keepers. They'll be a stranger in our house. There'll be a stranger according to the faith. And he also said to the eunuch. Now, eunuch is means twice. Eunuch is also somebody of high statue, an officer. But then eunuch also said, he said, here, look, I am a dry tree. So somebody asked me, said, what does that mean? Why did he say something about him being a dry tree? And when you read on, we're going to let the Bible actually explain the question. Verse number four. For thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs, that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So therefore, it just answered the question about the dry tree. It said, the Lord said to the people who have a dry tree, he said, those, are the, those who will guard my Sabbath, not just keep it. It's saying right here, those who guard. I know the King James Version say keep. But in Hebrew, the word keep means shamar, means to guard. So it um, so means to guard, to protect, to cherish, to love. So it ain't just keeping the Sabbath. It's actually guarding the Sabbath. And why he say you to guard it? Because you know somebody going to come take it from you. Don't let them take the Sabbath because you are blessed to keep it. Remember, he said that. Don't let them do it. But then he said right here, he said, that same person who keeps my Sabbaths, and it has an S on it, so it's more than one type of Sabbath. That's also, y'all see, y'all, the seven days change, and also his other Sabbaths, which are his holy days, those are done away with too. But yet he's saying, you are blessed to keep the Sabbaths. That's his holy days as well as his weekly Sabbath. And it said, have chosen to do what pleases him. So what do we do out here that pleases the Most High? Well, it's not standing on the corner cussing at people. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I know a lot of Hebrews are gonna hate that, but I don't care. Exactly. That that you you taking his name, you cussing in the name of the Most High. Yeah, you think he pleased that he pleased about that? No, that ain't choosing what pleases him. You doing it on the Sabbath? You be hooray. You you look like a lamb, but you speak like a dragon. So let's keep let's keep going. Verse six. Oh, I'm also, sorry. also, the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve Him. And to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take take up hold of my covenant, mm. even them what I bring to my holy mountain. Start right there. Back at five, when I was saying, like, let me finish. I mean, let, let's finish. I, I didn't finish this part on five. He answered it right here. I'm going to give you my walls and a place, a name better than sons and daughters. That's what the dry tree was. You know, it's a man who is castrated or cannot have kids. You know, it's always a wonderful thing that a father can have children to, you know, to let the, you know, to grow trees. Basically, he's a dry tree, meaning he doesn't have a family line. So when he dies, 
the family tree stops with him. It don't keep going. So he was saying like, I can't have a family like the rest of the Hebrews. Or remember he said, be fruitful and multiply. That's not just for the Jews. That's for everybody. That's why everybody have the organs. You see what I'm saying? Not just Jews and Israelites have organs. Everybody have organs to be fruitful and multiply. So his blessings are not just for one race. Or he wouldn't have gave everybody the same stuff. This man said, don't let them, don't, don't, just because you can't have kids, you ain't no different than my people. If you decide to keep your hands from doing evil and keep my Sabbaths, I'm going to give you something better than a son and a daughter. So ask God himself, what can he give you better than a, your own son, your own daughter? And he said, I'm going to give you a name that never get cut off. Now, when she got to um, verse 6, she said, the sons of the foreigner who have joined themselves. Now notice he said join. Israel was already his people. So these are strangers who weren't his people. They first joined the Lord. They served him. They love his name. They're going to be his servant. That's like a slave. That's what I'm saying. A slave servant who's guarding the Sabbath to not profane it and hold fast to the covenant. These are six things that he's saying. These are strangers following six things that are strange to them. But if you do these things, I will bring you to my holy mountain. That's not Israel stuff. That's foreigners and eunuchs. They doing this stuff just like Israel. I'm going to bring you to the holy mountain. And let's see what, so what else he say right after that. Uh, verse yeah. 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. All people. So let me guess. All people are just Jews. All mankind is just one race of people. No, it's not. He just told you, for them I'm going to bring to my holy mountain. And then he said, their burnt offerings and slaughter. We do got to remember, this is Isaiah. And at this time, people were coming from out of their heathen worship into serving the Most High. This is eight, Isaiah wrote his book back in 700 BC, 600 BC. So back in the Paleo Hebrew times, this was way before Christianity, way before Christ and all this kind of stuff. People were joining, coming in, joining the Most High and Israel. And he was telling them, how huh, you do all this stuff? I'm going to accept your burnt offerings. Well, as you was a heathen, I wouldn't have did it. But that you keep my laws, my statutes, you love my name, you do what I tell you to do. Hold on. I'll accept your offerings. Now, of course, you know, in the New Testament, we don't have to offer anymore that his son became the ultimate sacrifice. So this was also Old Testament going into the New Testament. Anybody who wants to come from outside and come in, they have to follow guidelines. Then he accepts them as a part of his people. So I just want, I want everybody to put that. And it said the master who gathers the outcasts of Israel, he said, I still will gather others beside those who already are gathered. So the Lord himself will gather all of the outcasts of Israel, bring them back, but also gather people who gather to those Israelites. So you got Israel out there preaching the truth, and you got other people from other nations grafting themselves, joining the Israelites, and he going to grab all of them and bring them to the holy mountain. So yes, Israel is a big mission going on with Israel, but some of our Israelite brothers and sisters don't understand what they're supposed to do. So without telling everybody else they can't be saved when we're supposed to be out there trying to save other people, not telling them to go away from the kingdom. Because Christ said in himself in Matthew 23, I learned today, you shutting up the kingdom for other nations, but you ain't going to get in. That's right. So just let you know that. Okay, so. And we're supposed to be that light to the other nations. That's, that's to me, that's a big, important key phrase. For you to be light to other nations, you, you're supposed to share this word to them you know to bring them into Israel but we're doing the complete opposite and that's why you know people who you know that's waking up the first thing they do is they go to YouTube and they see all this blasphemy on YouTube with all these camps just cursing out people left and right no that's not the spirit of y'all if you're supposed to be a light you're supposed to you know, go out and teach this word with love. And if those want to come and graph in, you're supposed to let them and show them the correct way of doing it. But we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, this is just like some things that I wanted to bring to kind of show you the blessings of just the Sabbath. It ain't just for the Jews. It's for all over. Matter of fact, I even got a book right here that's written by a Nigerian. 
and it's a picture of Africa on it, and it says Sabbath Roots, the African Connection. Now, they'll sit there and tell you, no, they didn't come up with the Aaron. They know it came from the Father. They know it came through the Hebrews. But when they went around doing a, when the Hebrews and Jews started doing their evangelism, they started learning a lot of Sabbath in ancient times as well. If you read in the Bible, it, you'll see as Egypt started kind of getting into there, you'll see it talks about the rivers beyond Ethiopia, the Abyssinians and all the people, especially Sub-Sahara, all up in here are full with people keeping the Sabbath. And they wrote a book saying, hey, don't forget about us. The Sabbath ain't just for the Jews. It's a black thing, too. I'm sorry. But it's an African thing, too. Now, you got a lot of people out there calling themselves African-Americans. And you say, you look at your DNA, you got all this stuff. That you got all your, you know, you, you Ethiopian, this tribe, that tribe. <laughs> your tribe got a lot of Sabbath in it. And you got to understand where they get it from, the scriptures itself. So it's not just for the Jew Jews. We see, if you want to say African-American, you want to call yourself African, you got, you got Sabbath in your DNA, too. Right. Don't forget that. The world has forgotten it. That's why he said remember that. But yeah, it's in your roots, man. And these people write, I mean, tribe out of tribe saying, don't forget about us. We got killed too trying to keep this. Just like the Jews did. Just like the Christians did in the Roman times. Everybody, is, this ain't just for the Jews. I just want people to understand that. So, a few of them. We want a few, uh, a few right now we want to get to in the first video, number one. It's, it's time. Oh. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we may. Yeah. We went over already. Oh man, that's too fast. Oh man, too fast. Well, we gotta make part two. You gotta cut it off though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, sorry about that. I well, next part two we're gonna get into actually the um, what I wanted to show you what other denominations say about the Sabbath. And you'll be shocked on a lot of them because most of them do not talk bad about the Sabbath at all. Matter of fact, they promote the Sabbath. And you start thinking, hold on, all these people promoting the Sabbath but still don't want to keep it. It's something's wrong. They don't want to keep it, but they promote it and say, we, actually, we should do it even more now than then back then. I have do from Moody. Uh, anybody know the Moody Bible Institute? Uh, DL. He, uh, he the one that said it himself. So what we're going to do, we're going to come back on part two and um, start there. So see you later. Shalom.